I'm Keith Olderman, and this is The Resistance. Case closed. Lost in the laugh-out-loud funny statement to the Senate Intelligence Committee from Jared Kushner. Lost in the understandable confusion over Trump's plaintive cry for protection from the Republican Party. Who are they supposed to protect him from? Putin? Lost during the understandable anxiety about what Trump will do next. Four titanic facts have now emerged. Their importance cannot be overstated. The conclusion they lead to cannot be avoided. We have all been right all this time. The essence of the conspiracy case against Donald Trump, his presidential campaign, his presidential administration, and the government of Russia has for all intents and purposes been proven. These four titanic facts are, barring the most bizarre and unexpected of exculpatory explanations, one, the now Attorney General of the United States reportedly lied about meeting and discussing the campaign with and colluding with the Russian ambassador to this country during the campaign, and two, that he did so provides another indication that the Trump presidential campaign sought to conspire to do a deal with a foreign nation to interfere with our elections, and three, the president's son-in-law and advisor now admits he asked the Russians to give the Trump transition team access to Russian-controlled communications channels to talk directly to the Kremlin last December, and four, that the Trump presidential administration seems to have orchestrated and enacted a full-scale, multi-tier, venal, indefensible plot to cover up those activities by the Trump campaign that were disloyal to the United States of America. In short, if the Washington Post and the intelligence intercepts it quotes are accurate between the perfidy of Jeffrey Beauregard's sessions, the email chain of Donald Trump Jr. and Kushner's blithe end run around formal legal communications links to the Kremlin, it is case closed. The Trump gang is guilty. At best, they only tried and failed to do a deal with the Russians. They are at this moment covering it up. The machinery of the law and the government and the loyal citizens of the United States need to be removing them, all of them, from the White House and need to be removing those who are defending them and placing party before country, all of them, from any position of authority in any branch of government, local or national, and this needs to be done immediately. So that there is no confusion about this, let's put two seemingly separate stories together. In June 2016, Trump Jr., Kushner, and Paul Manafort met with four people, at least one of whom they believed was a middleman for the Russian government willing to interfere with the American electoral process. What happened next is important, but it is not decisive. At that meeting, they all created a structure equivalent to holding up the liquor store. It doesn't matter if the bottles were empty. And there are intelligence sources reporting that the Russian ambassador to the United States confirmed to his masters in the Kremlin that in April 2016 and July 2016, he discussed with Sessions on behalf of the Trump campaign the policies which an incoming Trump administration could bend to serve Russia. What happened here next is important but not decisive either. They all created a structure equivalent to Aldridge Ames, selling out a hundred or more American spies for two and a half million dollars. It doesn't matter if Jeff Sessions doesn't know his quid from his pro quo. And now Kushner has submitted this statement to the Senate in which he claims he read some parts of an email invitation to meet with Russians to get Hillary dirt, but not others, and he attended the meeting anyway, and he admits the communications request and admits contacts with Russian officials without ever wondering why they wanted to meet with him. It is a conspiracy. And if these stories are correct, that means with Trump in office, Sessions lied to the Senate about his conspiracy with Russia. And while in office, Trump's administration has reportedly been searching for information to use to smear Bob Mueller to help cover up this conspiracy with Russia. And while in office, Trump fired Comey to cover up this conspiracy with Russia. And while in office, Trump reportedly personally signed off on Trump Jr.'s untrue statement about this conspiracy with Russia. 
The only conclusion is that there is a White House cover-up led by Donald Trump to hide a conspiracy with Russia. There are many additional details that link the chain of events more strongly still. Trump's ad lib promise of a speech about Russian dirt on Hillary Clinton, three hours after his son confirmed that meeting. Carter Page going to Russia, then meeting with Kislyak in Cleveland. Trump asking the Russians to find the Clinton emails. Trump reportedly divulging classified information to the Russians in the Oval Office. Trump meeting with Putin at the G20 with no other Americans present. This is what we know. It is impossible for anybody to believe that this is all the authorities know. Sessions appears to have been compromised by the Russians for at least 15 months, and he has apparently perjured himself before the Senate on two separate occasions. Trump Jr., Kushner, and Manafort have been compromised by the Russians for at least 13 months. And Trump himself either knew none of this and was thus what is called in intelligence circles an unwitting agent of the Russians and has been compromised by them since the day he met Kislyak, or he knew some or all of it and he has been far worse than that. For structure, for motive, for what evidence we have seen so far, the case is closed now. The Trump campaign was willing to accept what it believed was material from the Russian government for use in our presidential election. Trump family members and top-level campaign leaders met with the Russian ambassador to the United States to reportedly discuss how Trump would then change American policy to benefit Moscow. Candidate Trump urged the Russians to hack the computers of his opponent, and the computers of her party were already being hacked. The president-elect's son-in-law tried to establish a secret communications network with which to talk to the Kremlin. Case closed. The New York Times unearthed a document from special counsel Kenneth Starr's investigation of Bill Clinton insisting that a sitting president can be indicted. John Dean, the White House counsel to the only president ever to resign, says if Trump or an attorney general of any name tries to fire special counsel Mueller, Mueller can go to court to prevent the firing and he can win. And Trump cannot pardon himself, and anybody he does pardon loses the right to use the Fifth Amendment to avoid testimony at an impeachment or in court. Impeach, convict, and arrest Donald John Trump. Resist. Remove. Peace.